Hey guys, welcome to part one of the video build guide series for the 3BSM, the three bearing swivel module for the F-35B or other vertical takeoff or landing ducted fan aircraft. In this part of the series, we'll be building the mechanical structure of the 3BSM, getting the printed sections and ring gears assembled and the bearings and fasteners installed. We'll then tackle servo installation and software setup in other videos later in the series. So let's get started here. I've already printed all of my components. You'll see on the top row, I have the three BSM main sections. Um, one, two, three, and four. I have the nozzle as well. Uh, there are three ring inserts. One of them is straight for the first section, and the other two are angled for the next two sections. Uh, these two are the same for sections two and three. Next, we've got the ring gears. There's one ring gear for the first ring that's got a little over 25% of it covered in teeth. Um, and then the second and the third rings are a little more than half covered in teeth. And you'll notice that the gear teeth are herringbone style, so they're double helical teeth. And uh, the second ring gear section has teeth facing the opposite direction of the shorter first ring gear section. Um, and then the teeth on the third section face the same direction as the shorter first gear section. So that's how we'll tell them apart and we'll also have to keep this in mind when we assemble all of the sections later on. Next we have the servo mounts here. So these attach to each of the sections and they hold the servos. And lastly, we have the pinion gears. Although, since we're not going to be installing the servos in this video, uh, I'll go ahead and set them aside for later. I've got all my hardware laid out as well. First, there are some number two by 3 16 inch self-tapping screws that we'll use to attach the ring gears to the three BSM sections. Next, there are some two by five by 2.5 millimeter bearings. We'll be using 48 of these for this build, so make sure you're stocked up. And then lastly, we've got some M2 by 5 millimeter flathead Phillips screws that we'll use to install those bearings. And then over here on the far right, I've got my tools. Uh, I have an iFixit screwdriver set, but you really only need a small Phillips head screwdriver for this. And then I've got some regular non-foam safe CA, and then some activator for the CA as well. All right, so that's all the equipment and parts and tools that we'll need. Let's get started with the build. What I like to do first is get the steps that require gluing out of the way. Those are mainly installing these ring insert sections into their 3BSM sections, and then also installing the servo mounts. We'll start with section one and its ring insert. Make sure you've got the ring insert that's straight uh, meaning it's a cylindrical section and it's radially symmetric. Uh, the other ring inserts for sections two and three have kind of an angle to them. Uh, those aren't what you want for right now. So grab this ring section and the first three BSM section. They don't really have a directionality to them. You can install them in any rotational orientation. But it's a good idea to do a dry fit just to make sure that the ring insert is seated fully and that it doesn't have any weird protrusions or gaps caused by artifacts in the printing process. Go ahead and grab your medium CA. I like to make the bead on the inside of the little step or depression that's in 3BSM section one. It doesn't really take much. CA bonds really well to this PLA so only use as much as you need to make good contact between these parts. Next, we'll go ahead and insert this ring and make sure it's fully seated. Then I like to stand it up on the table so that I can push down on it. Uh, make sure you're not deforming it at all because it is pretty thin. Then spray some activator in there. And that one's done. I'll set it aside. 
It's going to be the same process for the next two sections. Section 2 gets one of these angled ring inserts. These do have a directionality to them. Let's see if I can focus on this. You'll notice that there's a slot in one side of the ring insert. And there's also a slot on one end, in this case the tall end, of the 3BSM section. You'll want to go and make sure that when you press these together, the slots are aligned. And that's how you'll know you have a correct fit here. Other than that, it's the same process as the first one. Go ahead and lay your bead of CA along the inside lip. We'll get that installed here, and we'll make sure we line up the groove. And then again, I'll set this flat on the table and push down a little bit while I spray the activator. For this one with the angled ring insert, it's a little bit harder to push into the fully seated position uh, because of the print direction. So I'm going to make sure I apply pressure to this for a little bit longer just while the glue sets. Okay, we'll go ahead and set this one aside. Same exact process for section 3 and its angled ring insert. Uh, it's got the same little slot and groove arrangement, so just go ahead and repeat that. So next is section 4 and the nozzle. The nozzle's got a little lip on the inside, the same way the ring inserts do. It also has one of those little slot and groove arrangements that aligns with another slot on the edge of section 4. This doesn't really matter, it is symmetrical, but the real F35 does have a particular arrangement of how these feathers on the nozzles align with the axes of the aircraft. So if you align these slots and grooves, you'll get the right scale arrangement for how these feathers are positioned. So now we'll go ahead and apply a nice bead of glue to the lip here. Now, the nozzle can be a bit of a tight fit, so you may have to work at this a little bit to get it to engage.
All right, there we go. Now we'll get some activator in there. And that's it for those inserts. So the only other steps requiring glue are these servo mounts. You'll notice that the servo mounts have a little spot in them for a screw. So you'll also want to grab three of these 3 16th inch number two self-tapping screws. And of course, make sure that you've got your screwdriver and a bit that fits these screws as well. Now again, we'll start with section one. The servo mount for section one is symmetrical in the middle. So if you were to cut it in half, there's no difference between the curve on this side and the curve on this side. And you'll find that it mates very nicely with the little slot and hole in the 3BSM section itself. We'll get some glue on it, and then before we add activator, we'll install the screw in that screw hole. Make sure you get glue on all the faces here, pretty much everything, and then on the bottom here as well. Uh, so anything that's going to contact this edge, the radial edge, and then the flat faces around the screw hole. Just go ahead and set this on here like so. We'll grab one of our screws and we'll screw that in. Since it's only one screw, you'll want to make sure that it's pushed all the way down and that it's straight as you tighten it. Okay, so that looks good. We'll get some activator on there. and we'll set it aside. Now it works very much the same way for sections two and three, but you'll notice that these servo mounts are no longer symmetrical. One side has a much more pronounced curve than the other, and they're mirror images. So you'll want to find the servo mount that fits each section, and only one will work. So for number two, it's the section that, if you're looking at this from my point of view, the mount has a much more pronounced curve on the left side than on the right side. And you'll find that when you place this on here, it mates quite nicely and everything is straight and aligned. So same deal, let's get our glue. Go ahead and place this on here. Grab a screw and tighten it down. Now I'll hit it with some activator and set it aside. Then just repeat that exact same thing with the last section. All right, that's it for the assembly steps that require the glue. We can go ahead and put our CA aside. 
we won't be needing it anymore. Now the next step is to start installing all those bearings. And since we've got the main 3BSM sections already out, we'll do the bearings on those first. So just go ahead, we'll need a ton of these, so put them all in a pile so that they're handy. And then also grab all those flathead machine screws that we'll use to mount the bearings. Like I said before, we'll be needing a ton of these. Uh, this is a 50 pack and we'll be using 48 of each. So section one doesn't have any bearings because it mates directly to the ducted fan. So we don't have to worry about that. Section two has eight bearings around the bottom perimeter that are going to ride on the flat face of the section one insert. Let's get that section ready. And then make sure that you have another small Phillips screwdriver that'll fit these tiny machine screws. So you'll see the eight small cylindrical pockets for the bearings to fit in. You don't need any washers or anything, just place one of these in. Insert a screw. And then be very careful because this is going into plastic. But just go ahead and tighten that screw. Of course, we still need the bearing to spin freely. So what I'd like to do is tighten it all the way being careful not to strip the plastic. In a lot of cases it will still spin because there's a little raised edge that holds the non-rotating part of the bearing uh, and makes clearance for the outer casing. So if that's still spinning, if you're tightened all the way, awesome. If it's not, you'll want to back out anywhere from a quarter turn to a full turn of the screw. If you do that and it's still sticking, you'll probably want to go ahead and back that out all the way just to look to make sure there's no errant plastic or artifacts from the printing that are interfering with the bearing. So that looks good for the first one. We'll continue the remaining seven on this ring. That's all eight bearings on section one. We've checked to make sure that they all spin freely as we installed them. Now we can go ahead and set this aside. As you may have gathered, the layout is exactly the same on sections two and three. So I'm going to just quickly breeze through that and we'll catch up afterwards. There we go, I've installed all eight bearings in each of the remaining two 3BSM sections. And they're all nice and freely rotating. Now, as you've noticed, there are lots of extra bearings left. And that's because the ring gears have bearings too, eight in each. So we'll get started on that. Uh, we'll start with the first ring gear. And on these, the bearings are going to go in little angled positions around the perimeter. And these grab onto the back sides of these ring inserts when the 3BSM is assembled. Let's go ahead and start on that. I'll grab a bearing and a screw. I'll get it positioned on one of these mounting areas. 
and then I'll carefully screw it in. Same deal here. You want to make sure that the bearing can freely spin. If you tighten it all the way down and it does not, back it out a little bit until it does. It usually only takes about a quarter turn. All right, I'll now do the remaining seven on this gear. There we go, all eight bearings, all freely spinning. Now I'll do the same thing on the other two gears in a little time lapse here. All right, so that's it for tiny screws and tiny bearings. Let's go ahead and move on to the final assembly. So for this, we're going to need more of those little 3 16 inch self-tapping screws. We don't quite need all of these. We'll only be using 24, but I'll put the extras back into the bag when we're done. And then make sure that you've got a small Phillips screwdriver that'll fit these screws. The same one we used with the servo mounts is fine. Now we'll go ahead and stack this from the front of the 3BSM, this section one here, back to the nozzle. So the first things we'll need here are section one and then the ring gear that's got the short 90 degree section of teeth. Now we're going to have to slip this over the flange of the ring insert here and it's a tight fit. So you'll have to deform the 3BSM section a bit to get it over the lip. All right, once you've got that over, go ahead and pull it back up so that it's riding on the back side of this ring insert here. Uh, I promise that the other two aren't going to be quite as dramatic as this. Uh, this one just being a straight section means that the ring doesn't have a particular direction that it's easiest to deform to fit this gear over. But once you've got this popped over the edge here, go ahead and align it such that this stopper on the back side of this row of teeth is just to the left, uh, from my point of view here, of the servo mount. So that's where the row of teeth is going to start, and then this being section one will rotate this way when it transitions to the VTOL configuration. Next, grab 3BSM section two. We'll slip it inside the edge of this ring gear here. This is a tight fit as well, uh, as intended in order to make sure things don't get loose and sloppy once we've got it together. You can just dry fit this for now, and then of course make sure that when the holes are lined up, they're aligned such that when we've got this stopper aligned with the first servo mount, we're also aligned with the next servo mount. Uh, now, of course, this servo mount up here is angled, so it's tough, like it won't be perfectly aligned straight like that. 
Uh, but if you had it one hole off to the left or to the right, uh, you'd notice it'd be pretty far from alignment. Uh, so this, as shown, is the correct orientation here. And we'll go ahead and start screwing these little 3 16 inch screws down in there. When I do this, what I like to do is screw in opposite pairs uh, until I get all eight in there. Uh, not all the way down, because each screw you get in will sort of move the 3BSM closer to alignment. Uh, and then once they are all in, then we can go and tighten them all the way down uh, again in opposite pairs. All right, I've got my initial screw installation done here. Uh, I'm going to go and do the final tightening now. So once you've got those all tightened down, go ahead and check the rotation of the 3BSM. Uh, it should be able to be pretty easily rotated without much force, and it should not be sloppy. Uh, make sure you can't go and wiggle it and flop the sections around. Uh, but also make sure it's not sticking. Uh, this one's pretty good, so we'll just move right on to the next section. For the next gear, we want to make sure we grab the gear that when we put it on in the same orientation uh, with the straight cylinder up, uh, that the teeth are pointed in the opposite direction from the first gear. So from my point of view here, we've got the first row of teeth are forming an arrow pointed off to the right. Uh, we want to make sure we grab the ring gear for the second section that has the teeth pointed off to the left. And then let's get this slipped over the ring insert here. Fortunately, it's way easier to do that on these angled ones than it was on the flat one. Uh, and again, we want the stopper to be just past the servo mount. But this time, we want it to be just past the servo mount on the right side instead of on the left side. Now we'll pop in the next 3BSM section, aligning it with the holes and keeping the servo mounts lined up as well. Okay, let's get the screws in there. All right, so we've got all our screws tightened down. Uh, we've got our servo mounts and gear stoppers aligned. Uh, this one's a little stiff, so what I'm going to do is just work it back and forth a handful of times until it loosens up. What's happening here is that the bearings, of course, are metal. They're harder than the 3D printed plastic flanges, uh, so they'll just wear in a little groove to ride in that'll loosen up this motion. Okay, that's much better. So we'll move along to the last section. Now, there's only one ring gear left. Uh, pretty easy. No way to mix this up. Uh, first, we'll get it over this lip here. Now we're back to wanting the stopper for the teeth to be on the left side of the servo mount. And then this one's a bit trickier because we don't have a servo mount on section four to align. So basically you want it to align so that the thrust axis is straight rather than tilted. Uh, but another way to tell is that the slot 
that's here that we used to align the nozzle uh, with the 3BSM section when we were gluing parts together is going to be opposite the servo mount. Also, a second way to tell that you're aligned is that the shortest part of this last 3BSM nozzle section here is aligned with the longest part of the previous section. And then, of course, vice versa on the alternate side. All right, let's go ahead and get our last set of screws in there. Okay, all of the screws are in place. Now we'll go ahead and move around this last section of 3BSM to get it worked in and rotating freely. All right, there we go. So now we've completed the mechanical assembly of the 3BSM. You'll find you should be able to vector it around by hand, move all the rings, that sort of thing. In the next video, we'll be configuring the servos and then installing them along with their pinion gears. Then after that, we'll walk through controller board setup, programming, and then finally, operation. So thanks for watching part one and I'll see you in the next videos in this series.